All right, this is going to be a quick walkthrough of how to use Adaptive Fire. Uh, let's see how it goes. Down here in the corner, I've got what my worksheet would look like. Um, I just grabbed a random worksheet and uh, entered it in here. You don't have to enter it into a spreadsheet first. This is just what it would look like in my notebook. Um, first thing you're going to want to do, especially when you're first entering in your workouts, is make sure that you have all the right movements added already. Um, I know that I have all of these in here. If I were to add one, I would just type in plate row, and then I would select the preset weighting. In the case of a plate row, that doesn't apply. Um, I can either set it to body weight, which comes from the assessments tab. So that might actually be one of the first things you want to do is click the assessments tab, at least to enter in your uh, most recent body weight, if not all your measurements. Um, if I select body weight here, like with a pull up, it'll automatically enter in body weight. Uh, if not, you can set up arbitrary weights, like for example, we use 50 for a sit-up, just because it's pretty much always the same, but it's not full body weight. Enter that in, click Add Movement. So you got all your movements ready. Click over to the Training Tracker, and click Add Training Session. So I'm going to enter my first one in here, Plate Row. 65 pounds, that's a huge Plate Row. So you enter in the sets, reps, time. Uh, on the Zercher squat, I'm going to show you a shortcut. So you enter in the, the weight, sets. Let's say that you had in your notebook um, 6, 6, 8, 7. You can actually enter in a plus sign here, and it'll do the math for you. Uh, it only accepts plus signs, though, so don't get too fancy with it. So you keep entering stuff in here. You can enter kilos, kg, kilos, um, it'll do the conversion for you. Um, on the incline press, this is a good example. Anytime that there's um, you're using two dumbbells, two kettlebells, I personally like to use the total weight rather than the individual weight because that's how much weight I'm actually moving. Um, doesn't matter as long as you do it the same consistently. So in this case, it's two 30-pound dumbbells, but we're going to call it 60 total. Um, enter in all those specs. The Roman chair sit-up is going to be an example of a set weight exercise. So it's already set to 50 pounds. Let's say that you're holding a 10-pound plate. You would add 10 pounds. You don't need to add anything to that if you're not using any extra weight. Finally, on the kettlebell swing, I'm going to show you a little uh, trick that's sort of undocumented. Um, let's say that out of these 63 reps, you actually did 50 with the 32 kilo, and then another 13 with the uh, 36 kilo. Enter in the total sets here um, for your first one. So let's say you just did one set at the end. So eight sets with the 32 kilo, 50 reps, and then the time is going to be the same. If you click Add, don't change anything other than the weight, so 36 kilo, one set of that with 13 reps, same amount of time. What it's going to do is actually average that for you. So when you click View Session, so as you can see, here's your workout that you entered in. You can see all your improvements here. The kettlebell swing averaged to 72 pounds. Um, that's based on the amount of reps that you did at the higher weight and the amount of reps you did at the lower weight. Um, you can see all your little improvement numbers here. I went in and put in a fake workout before to just show you what the improvement would look like. Um, don't worry too much about how these numbers are calculated and how the trend is calculated. Just know that if it's greater than zero, more often than not, you're going to be moving very, very fast. Um, I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.